Hello. This week I finally intend to keep my promise and introduce you to one of the alternatives to probability theory when it comes to dealing with uncertainty in expert systems. While probability theory is well established and mathematically rigorous, as you've seen in previous lectures, there are distinct problems that come with using it, which is why an alternative such as this one, and others that I don't talk about here, were developed. I'll start with dempster schafer theory, which you might see listed in the literature as DST. This was first formulated by Arthur Dempster in 1967, and later developed and made a lot more accessible by Glenn Schaefer in 1976. Dempster's work contains a great deal of maths, mainly involving set theory. If you ever look up Dempster Schaefer in the academic papers, I hope you like set theory, because you'll be seeing an awful lot of it. Schaefer's work concentrates more on combining evidence from different sources, and for our purposes, I would recommend looking at his work rather than Dempster's. DST has some superficial resemblance to probability, as it deals with numbers in the range 0 to 1. This is an interval which is chopped up to assign degrees of belief in various propositions. We talk about degrees of belief or degrees of support rather than probabilities, and they are usually represented by the function BEL, followed by the proposition. Here's a statement from a witness to a hit-and-run accident who saw the car speeding away from the scene. I'm fairly sure that the car was either brown or black, probably black, but it could have been brown. I could be wrong, though. Well, we know for sure that one of the following is true. The car was definitely black, the car was definitely brown, the car was either brown or black, or the car was neither brown nor black. Based on that witness's rather vague statement, I've taken the interval 0 to 1, representing all of these possibilities lumped together, and divided it up amongst them. It's like probability theory, where we have a total probability of 1, which is the sum of all the possible values of a statement or situation. You'll see that I've given a total belief of 0.4 to the black, a little bit less, 0.3, to brown, a margin of 0.2 to the possibility that the car was either of these two colours, but we don't know which, and the rest of the interval, which is 0.1, to the possibility that the car wasn't either of these two colours, since the witness admitted he wasn't absolutely certain. The interval itself covers every single possibility. You could think of these figures as probabilities, but that would be misleading. The thing that stops them being probabilities is that wretched section marked either black or brown. After all, what is the probability, given that diagram, that the car was black? Would it be 0.4, or somewhere between 0.4 and 0.6? We don't know. The only probability that we could get from this is that of the car being neither black nor brown, i.e. 0.1. Instead of probabilities, these individual values assigned to the possible states are often referred to as masses. That's why I use the letter M in the diagram. Now we can combine those masses into belief values or support values. The belief that the car was black is simply the mass that we gave to the witness's statement that the car was black, 0.4. We can't include the value of 0.2 as that isn't a mass supporting the belief that it was black, merely supporting the belief that it was one of the two colours. Similarly, the belief that the car is brown is 0.3. Belief in the hypothesis can be thought of as the lower limit on the probability of that hypothesis. We don't know what the probability that the car was black is, but we know it's either 0.4 or higher. The plausibility on the hypothesis represents an upper limit. The plausibility that the car was black is all of those masses that don't contradict that statement, the degree to which the evidence fails to contradict it. There are two of those, namely 0.4 and 0.2 giving a plausibility of 0.6. The rest of the range, 0.3 plus 0.1, gives the total mass that support the statement that the car wasn't black. It was brown or some other colour. Similarly, the plausibility that the car was brown is the mass for it definitely being brown, plus the mass for it being brown or black. Between them, these two cover all the possibilities that the car could have been brown giving a plausibility of 0.5. You'll notice that the plausibility of either of the two colours is equal to 1 minus the belief in the opposite. The plausibility of it being a black car is 1 minus the belief that it wasn't black. 
and vice versa. In fact, that's a general rule. The plausibility of any statement A is equal to 1 minus the belief that A isn't true. To generalise, I have to touch base briefly with set theory. Don't worry, I won't be going off into reams of set equations the way that Dempster does. The belief supporting the statement is all the masses or divisions of that range of one unit that are subsets of the statement. To make this clearer, I'll subdivide the space up a little more. Let's suppose that the witness mentioned the possibility that the car had chrome trims, or possibly a powerful engine, but only if it was a black car. At this point, I might start to doubt that the witness was in his right mind, but let's just run with it. What's the belief in the statement, the car was black? Well, we now have three masses, which might be considered subsets of that, including the bald statement, the car was black itself. Hey, the statement can be considered a subset of itself. The belief for the statement is found by adding the masses for those subsets, giving us the value of 0.4 as before. We don't include the possibility that the car was either black or brown, because that's not a subset of the car was black, as it includes the possibility that the car was brown. Here it is in an easier to digest form. That rectangular box is the entire unit space, divided up into overlapping sets. The belief in proposition A is the mass of set A itself, plus the masses of all its subsets, all the sets entirely enclosed within it. The plausibility of A is the mass of set A, plus the masses of all the subsets of it, plus the masses of all the sets that overlap with it, i.e. all the sets whose intersection with A isn't the empty set. On the left of the screen, you'll see these definitions written in set notation, copied straight from the walls of Tutankhamun's tomb. The plausibility of A must be the same as, or bigger than the belief, and the masses of all regions must add to 1. As with probability theory, if we're going to use Dempster, Schaefer and expert systems, then we're going to need ways of combining hypotheses, specifically not A, A and B, and A or B, when, where A and B are both assertions with belief values and plausibility values. Unlike with probability theory, this is actually fairly straightforward. Let's start with the easiest, not A. To get the belief in the negation of A, use 1 minus the plausibility of A. To get the plausibility of the negation of A, use 1 minus the belief in A. What about the belief in A and B, A or B? Take a look at those two horizontal lines on the right-hand side of the screen. In each case, the belief and plausibility of the two statements are laid out from left to right, so that the belief in A and that the belief that A is wrong are like opposing armies facing each other across the battlefield, with a no-man's land of uncertainty between them. The length of each of those two lines is one unit, split into the three sections. On the left of the screen, you see the same two lines, with the line for A rotated by 90 degrees, so that they now form a square. Since the length of each side of the square is the length of the line, i.e. one unit, the area of the square is one square unit, or just one unit in terms of mass values. That square is made up of nine masses, some of which contribute to the belief in one or both of the statements, and some to the plausibility of one or both of the statements. To get the belief in both A and B together, ask yourself which of those masses are associated with the subset of the square that is A and B united. Only M3, only the mass that contributes to both the belief of A and the belief of B. Just multiply the belief values for the individual statements to get that. Which masses contribute to the plausibility of A and B together? That's the sum of all the masses that contribute to the plausibility of A and B. If they're in both the plausibility range of A and the plausibility range of B, they count. In this case, multiply the plausibility values for the individual statements. It's similar for the OR combination, except in this case, we only need the masses to prop up at least one of the statements. The belief in A or B is found by adding the belief values for the individual statements and subtracting the belief that they both occur, M3 in this diagram, to prevent it appearing twice in that addition sum. 
Similarly, the plausibility of A and B is everything in that square except the mass value that is specifically mitigates against both the statements, M7. M7 represents the belief that both A and B are false, and the plausibility that either or both of them is true is 1 minus that. We can summarise these combination rules in the following formulae. I'm sure you're struck by how similar they are to the equivalent rules for combining probabilities. Indeed, if you specify that there can't be any room for uncertainty between the belief of any statement and its plausibility, i.e. you fix the plausibility and the belief for any statement as being the same number, then these formulae simply become the combination rules of probability theory. However, unlike probability theory, we don't need vast tables full of figures for conditional probabilities going back through some chain of reasoning. Once we have a belief value and a plausibility value for a statement, all the figures that led up to it can be jettisoned. Also, as you have seen, it handles ignorance very well, unlike probability. Of course, things get a little harder once we try to combine more complicated statements. This table combines evidence from two witness statements to that hit and run earlier. The first witness statement we've already seen. The second witness was absolutely certain that the car speeding away was either black or dark blue. It could still include a column for neither black nor dark blue for that witness, for completeness if nothing else. But if we did, we would have to assign all the masses in that column to zero values. The combined belief in the assertion that the car was black is the sum of any of those 12 masses, the 12 cells in that table, that form subsets of that assertion. This can only be one mass, the one marked in yellow in the top left corner, representing both witnesses agreeing that the car was black. The plausibility for the assertion that the car was black is all the masses that include black as a possible colour from both witnesses. The one marked in yellow plus the two marked in pink. None of the other cells can count towards the combined belief because they are incompatible with both witnesses saying the car was black. Now I know what you're thinking, because I'm psychic. Hang on, Richard, hang on, you're thinking. What you've just done doesn't match up with those formulae that you gave us on the previous slide. True, but then they're not trying to achieve the same thing. What you see here on the screen is combining two sources of evidence for the same assertion, the car was black. From this table, we could calculate the belief and the plausibility for that statement. We could use the same table to calculate similar values for the assertion that the car was brown, or that the car was dark blue. On the other hand, the formulae that I showed you, the ones very similar to probability theory, are used to find the AND or OR combinations for two different assertions, the sort of thing that you might see in an expert system. Here's a rule you've seen before. The only animals that are mammals and can truly fly, as opposed to simply gliding from tree to tree, are bats. The inputs to the rule are the assertions that the animal is a mammal and that the animal can fly. And both of these have their own belief values and plausibility values given the strength of evidence that we're looking at. Since this rule is an AND rule, we multiply the belief values of the individual assertions to get the belief value the assertion that the animal is a bat, and similarly for the plausibility values. That's the difference between the formulae and the table in the previous slide. It's not the same as trying to combine two statements which are ostensibly about the same assertion, such as witness statements from people who claim to have seen the same accident. Phew, that was quite a long roundabout route to get to a rather simple end point, but at least you can now see the mathematical basis of dempster Schaefer theory. To use an Americanism, you can now see where DST is coming from. In the next lecture, I'll introduce you to fuzzy logic and, if there's enough time, to certainty factors as well.